Hi folks, Canadian Preppers. So today we're doing a gun review, something that doesn't happen too often on this channel. But I figured that this one is specifically tailored to survivalist preppers, so why not? I'm going to be reviewing the Shiapa M6 survival rifle. I don't know if I'd necessarily call this a survival rifle just yet. It really is built so rock solid. It's really a standalone rifle in itself. So it's not a survival rifle in the sense that the Henry US survival rifle, the AR-7 uh, repeating arms is. And it's not a semi-auto. It's a single shot, but you do get two shots because it's an over-under combination. So I have this one chambered in a 20 gauge over 22 magnum round. There's a variety of different caliber combinations that you can get this gun in. So you can get 12 gauge over 22 long rifle. You can get the 20 gauge over 22 long rifle or 12 gauge over magnum. It's up to you. Now I chose the 20 gauge over the 22 magnum because I wanted a bit more options in my arsenal. I don't have a gun that shoots 22 magnum and I don't have a gun that shoots 20 gauge. So this allowed me to have both of those things and the 20 gauge shells are just a little bit smaller than the 12 gauge shells so you're going to be able to carry a little bit more but they're still going to have a lot of stopping power behind them. So the difference between the 22 long rifle and the 22 magnum is that the 22 magnum is quite a bit more powerful there's more gunpowder, so it's going to be shooting a lot faster, and the killing range is going to be farther. You'll also be able to take slightly larger game and smaller game with greater confidence with a magnum round as opposed to a long rifle round. However, it should be noted that the magnum round is a very rare round and it is a lot more expensive. It's also about 25% larger. This may be a minor factor in how much you can carry. For me, my thinking is that because it's not a semi-automatic rifle, I want the one shot I get to be as powerful as possible, even if I'm only taking out smaller critters. Now there is a 12 gauge version in this gun that actually uses inserts and you can shoot a variety of different calibers through it, but I'm gonna tell you why I didn't go that route. Number one, I think if you're gonna go the length of getting a 12 gauge and you're gonna be carrying around all those big clunky steel inserts as well and a variety of different types of ammunition in a survival situation, it just doesn't seem like that would be a very likely scenario to me. And of course, because you're firing from an insert, it's not gonna be as accurate. So. Some people may opt for that. If you want a bit more options in terms of the types of ammunition you can shoot, then by all means go with the 12 gauge. And really the 12 gauge is a very versatile round. It's going to be everywhere. So that would be another reason why you might want to get this in 12 gauge. I chose 20 gauge because I wanted to try something new. Now the 20 gauge still has a lot of kick and a lot of power to it. I put lots of buckshot, lots of slugs through it, and it is a very, very powerful gun. Certainly enough that I would feel comfortable using it for self-defense against bears or other carnivorous critters like that. And one of the great things about having this over-under combination over just say a semi-auto 22 uh, repeating arms rifle is that you can pretty much kill anything with this gun. You can kill medium game, you can kill waterfowl, you can take out small game with the 22. So there's just a lot more options. It's just an all around more capable combination weapon. Now the only drawback to this rifle is the weight, but that's also a great strength. This is a very, very rock solid, well built firearm. It does have a polypropylene foam stock. So if you were to drop it in the water, it's not gonna sink to the bottom, which could be a pain in the ass to try to find your rifle if it fell in the water. At least it's gonna float. So even though it's six pounds, it has that polypropylene foam, it's gonna keep it afloat for the most part I haven't tested this out yet and the foam also has these ammunition slots the ammo that goes in there is gonna fit very tightly so it's gonna be very hard to get out which of course would be a good thing if you were just using this in a survival capacity because you wouldn't want that stuff to fall out then of course when you did need it you might need a multi-tool or something like that to help you get that ammunition out if you don't have long fingernails but this is something I don't necessarily mind I don't know if this would be an option I would necessarily be using in that type of situation I might want to keep ammunition a bit more readily accessible just because this is only a single shot but it is very quick to unload and reload once you get in the habit of doing it now it comes with a fiber optic front sight it comes equipped with a three-sided Picatinny rail system so if you wanted to you could trick this thing out with all the latest and greatest but I don't know if that's necessary considering this is a survival rifle now I've considered putting a red dot 
scope on there. The only problem with that, of course, is that Red Dot runs on a battery, so it's the battery is going to run out. So for when building a survival rifle like this, I want it to last indefinitely. I don't have to worry about the build quality of this gun. I know that it's built rock solid, so that's going to last. It's just all the little accessories, like the adjustable rear sight. It's an M1 style uh, rear sight. Not really the sturdiest in its construction, but it holds a zero well, and that's all you really need. And this thing is pretty accurate. I was only shooting at about 25 yards. I was shooting quite lackadaisical here, and as you can see, the barrel was moving up when I was shooting it. But for the most part, I mean, it's as accurate as the shooter is going to be accurate. And part of that is attributable to the, the heavy weight of it and that there's not a whole lot of recoil. Obviously, there's still going to be a significant amount of recoil with a 20 gauge, especially if you're putting three inch buckshot through there. As you can see here, I'm putting buckshot through it at 10 to 15 meters. The spread is pretty significant because it is a smooth bore. This one is not equipped for interchangeable choke tubes, but I think that the 12 gauge one is, so you may want to look into that. Having that variable choke option and tightening up that shot pattern may be something that you want. I can tell you I've shot bird shot through this thing before at 25 yards and it's just everywhere. It, it's shooting like a sawed off almost. Now you do have your double triggers on there. This takes a little bit of getting used to because the front trigger is actually the 22 so it's on the bottom and the back trigger is the shotgun. So some people have had concerns about this that it should be flipped around but just know that until you get into the habit of this uh, you might find yourself clicking the wrong trigger at times so you're definitely going to want to practice that before you do come to rely on this in the field. So this gun uses a slide safety. You can use your thumb to slide it in the firing position with ease with the hand opposite your trigger finger. The gun is also well balanced which makes for easy handling and lowered recoil. As you can see here in spite of the fact that the stock is made of a poly foam it's still perfectly evenly balanced over the break in the action. Because it's a smaller gun, I mean it is an 18.5 inch barrel, but the stock is actually quite small and it is a, meant for portability. It can be a little bit counterintuitive to use a lever that opens the action. Now there's a variety of accessories you can get with this. You can get the inserts like I said before, you can get the backpack, you can get a chamber in a variety of different calibers as indicated. Now I should add that there is an extractor on there. Normally the round is going to just pop out or fall out after you finish shooting it but sometimes you have to pull it out with your fingernails which can be a bit of a pain in the ass. But if you pop it open while it's still hot usually the round will just pop right out. There is a portable cleaning kit in the foam stock which I demonstrate using here. It can be a little bit tricky but if it is all you had in the field it will do the job or solvent and a little bit of oil might come in handy in that situation as well. So certainly by no means not the easiest cleaning kit. I don't even necessarily know if this is something that's needed. If this is going to be a strictly survival rifle, maybe that spot would be better used for another shotgun slug. Who knows? It's a nice little addition anyways. Now if you want a gun like this, it's not folding. You can check out the Schiappa Double Badger rifle and shotgun combination. That's in your standard wood stock. I believe it's 22 long rifle and 410. Now the prices for this gun seem to fluctuate. I believe I paid around 600 for this one when all said and done. But like I said, the price fluctuates due to supply and demand. I think right now on the manufacturer's website it's retailing for 700 American and that's in all of the configurations. I'm not sure if the gauge adapters come with the shotgun version, if you have to buy those separate. I imagine that you probably have to buy them separate. But anyways, I will post a link to the website below. I think that this gun is not just a survival rifle, but it serves a lot of function as just an everyday shooter. And I like the ability that I can now have something that I can fire that uh, 20 gauge and 22 magnum out of. Now what inspired me to get this gun in the first place was a video I seen by Todd over at the Central Oregon Survival Network and he was showing off his Savage Model 42. Now he swears by that gun but unfortunately I've heard some mixed reviews about it so I did a bit more digging and I decided on the Shiapa M6 because it, the reviews on it just seemed a little better. Well, actually the reviews on the Shiapa Little Badger were a lot more reliable than the Savage Model 42. Apparently the Savage Model 42 was based on an older version which was a bit more robust in its build design and this new Savage 42 isn't as 
robust, but that's just what I hear based on the consensus of the reviews that I've read. So I went for something that was built a little bit more rock solid. One of the main benefits of this gun is that it's in a league of its own. Now there are over under combination guns available on the market as I've indicated, but this is the only one which closely resembles what could be construed as a survival rifle due to its folding and relatively packable form factor. While it isn't as transportable as the Henry AR repeating arms rifle, it is far more capable with the shotgun and the inserts on the Excalibur version. So anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll post a link to Shiapa's website in the description so that you can look into getting one of these guns for yourself if you so choose. If you are a fan of these gun review videos and you'd like me to do more, please show your support by liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.